Well, we're here with Little Buck, who I, I was introduced to in 2011. Yes. Uh, when Damien Wotzel, the director mm -hmm. of the Aspen Institute Arts good Program. To see you. Yeah, yeah, it's great to see you. He invited you to collaborate with Yoyoma right, yes. in 2011. Correct. And someone in the audience, Spike Jones, documented that and put it up on YouTube and it went viral, right? Yep. Two You're million a good friend. hits. Yeah. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to Spike Jones. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was crazy. He put it, he threw it up on YouTube and it just went crazy. Yeah, and, and rightfully so, because the, what you were showing us all, joking, right? Yes. It's incredible what you can do with your body through these movements. I wanted you to talk to us about the origins of joking first. Can you do that? Absolutely. Yeah. Well the um joking originally um it was originated in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. it, that, that's the uh, hometown for the dance style, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who do this style in Memphis, Tennessee. You know how, yeah. like how in LA you have the poppers and right. the b-boys, the ray dancers right. and everything, like predominantly you have them. Mm -hmm. And uh, our thing was joking it because it's it's so, um, it's such a, uh, you know, it was born there, so everybody's introduced to it. Like people growing up, people are sometimes, a lot of people are born, you know, mm -hmm. and and their parents or, you know, or whatever, um, or their peers, you know, they, they'll start dancing with their, you know, their parents will start teaching them from young. And mm -hmm. up. I learned when I was 12 years old, oh. and um, but a lot of people started when they were like three years old, four years old, and things like that. But yeah, it, it, um, that's how much of a, you know, homely style it is because like we don't, you don't see too many poppers or b-boys or anything mm -hmm. like that in Memphis, Tennessee. There are some there, but uh, you see mostly jokers. Like you can just drive around Memphis and just see like, you might see a joker outside in the parking lot getting down out yeah. of nowhere just with music. Like, Yeah. So can you show us a little bit about what this style looks like? I think for anyone watching, they might want to see because I've got so much energy about it. I'm so excited to be talking to you here. I know there's some central features, right, to jukin, right? Oh uh, yes, well th there's, um, there's joking, which is you know the style in its own because, yeah. um, and I forgot to mention before it, it all came from gangster walking back in the okay. late '80s too, like yeah. uh, as far as the origins of it. Yeah. Um, well, really, like the early '80s, I believe, um, because mm -hmm. like I was born in '88 and it's been around <laughs> since before me. So right. uh, around right. the uh, yeah the early '80s, it's been around and um, it was originally called gangster walking, and that's where the whole style came from. Like it started from like this line dance called yeah. gangster walk. It was kind of a line dance, like people did together in different, yeah. in different like skate rings, and it was just like a step, a confident step, mm -hmm. and it's mo mostly a bounce because like joking is really nothing without that bounce. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. bounce, and we, that bounce we got from listening to different music, it was the bounce that we kept in our movement, yeah. and th uh, so that's how that was born. And uh, joking was um, an evolution of gangster walking, you know, throughout the evolution of dance. Period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the evolution of our times, you know, mm -hmm. from the 80s to the 90s, everything evolved, and Jukin did too. So, um, Gangsta Walking evolved into Jukin, and Jukin, it has like two different other styles within it, mm -hmm. under that branch. It's like a family tree. Yeah. And Bucking is one of them. Bucking is more of an explosive style, mm -hmm. like uh, one us? that I'm really known for. That's why they call me Lil Buck. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but Bucking is more like boom, boom. It's more like a lot of big, it's more like really eye-catching, like big explosive moves. Like yeah. you'll see a lot of explosiveness and bucking in mm -hmm. that style. And chopping is more of um, when you just chop, you break the beat down, break the beat down into different parts. Right. And you can chop at different tempos as well. Like mm -hmm. if there's a beat, it's really not too smooth, like juking yeah. or like bucking could be. And um, excuse me, it's more of a, um, just a chop. Chop, It's more like a chop feel. You just keep that in your head. Yeah. So that's the difference, if you can see, between all three of those styles. Yeah. You've gone through a lot of training also, right? Yes. You know, so it's not just talent, innate talent from the womb, right? Nope, <laughs> There's so it's not much just training. You talent from the womb. It, uh, yeah. It's a lot of training, a lot of hard work, yeah. and um, just a lot of knowledge, just getting to know uh, getting really into what I do, getting really into dance, period. Mm -hmm. Getting to know different aspects of dance, different styles of dance, mm -hmm. and just um, evolving myself like that. But um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, I have trained. I have trained like classically for about two years. I mm -hmm. have formal training. Yeah. Um, started when I was around seventeen, I believe. Yeah. When I was around seventeen years old, I was. I was a part of this um, hip hop dance company called Subculture Royalty, and then mm -hmm. we um, we started taking ballet at this place in Memphis called New Ballet Ensemble yeah. in school with the art director Katie Smythe, and um, 
we got we we started you know fusing the boat. We started trying to learn ballet to help our hip hop, you uh -huh. know, yeah. core wise and everything. Yeah. And then one thing led to another. Uh, she saw me dancing and she wanted me to mm -hmm. become a company member because she thought what I did was beautiful. And yeah. um, I really respect that out of her. You know, yeah. she took me in and um, mm -hmm. I learned ballet on scholarship for about two years in New mm -hmm. Ballet Ensemble and. Um, that's actually where the Swan was uh, was born, dancing uh, in that ensemble. I love that because also so many people, you know, iconic artists of all kinds, have like one moment, one person yeah. who gives them this this sort of new path and opportunity, right? Yeah. We're, Before we were talking, you did something that I thought was almost superhuman, and it was so casual. You know, <laughs> you were standing here and you put your hat on one. I just hand threw it across my chest. Yeah. yeah. This body it's really control. old. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of body control. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of body control yeah. to be able to juke too, because yeah. juking is more of. Um, it's it, it's really based on like the balance. Mm -hmm. That's the key in music in musicality and yeah. and with musicality. The, I mean, with musicality, when you want to have really good musicality and we want to be really good at it, you want to have as much body control as possible because yeah. um, um, that way you can hit beats in different parts of your body. You have like right. various ways of hitting the music. You know, you, you, yeah. it's not just limited to one uh, form of movement. You can do it anyway because you you like have so much body control. And um, yeah, it takes a lot. Just like, <laughs> hopefully, I catch it. Yeah, like that. I I, you just have to know. I just know my body. I guess. Yeah. It, it's like it's like any other sport. It's like it's like a swimmer. Or it's yep. like any other athlete that yeah. you know that really knows, like a, like a basketball player that slams mm -hmm. dunks uh, like backwards without right. even seeing the goal. You know, right. it's just like that. We right. just you have to really have a good understanding, and dancers tend to develop a good understanding of their body as they as they evolve and get better. Absolutely. You know, something else I love that you do is it's almost like you are a mathematician, right, as you break down. Exactly. That's what it is. It's kind of like mathematics in my head. Mm -hmm. keep, yeah. No, no, no. It's just you're able to show us so many movements within one second, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and in that moment, you can't even probably overthink it, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I tend to have that problem with myself. I'm kind of like a, I got a, this like Jacqueline High thing going on in here in my brain as far as like dance. Yeah. I really, um... I tend to like battle with myself. Is it, am I going too fast? Am I am I doing it? Like, are they comprehend, comprehending it uh, as well as I am? Because I know exactly what I'm doing and which beat I'm jumping in and out of. Sometimes I get too I get so like into it up here that it just like comes out crazy. And I know exactly how I did it, and I can repeat it. It's just that I know my body so well that. Like, I just have that control, I guess. And, it, and it's really good for, like, speed changing, too. Like, we call it, like, just speed changing or warping. Mm -hmm. when, um, when music, like, tends to have, like, a certain note, and then it goes... Doo -doo 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 you can really accent that with that control and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and those movements. Like, I, yeah, I do a lot of stuff within, like, one second. You probably yeah. see, and it's yeah. kind of crazy. It's incredible. Yeah. Sometimes I gotta slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> so we can all just keep up, right? Yeah. Is there anything that you worry that we're not comprehending about juking or about where you wanna go with, with dance? You made me think about that and you said, I wonder if they're keeping up, you know, when I'm doing this. Yeah, project. well, um well actually, um it's that, of course. Yeah. Because um, you know, I wanna keep it um I wanna keep evolving, of course, within mm -hmm. my own brain, but I wanna keep it uh when I'm performing at a level to where everybody can really understand and, and you know, relate to. There's yeah. one last thing maybe I can ask. It's who have you not collaborated with that you might like to? Do you have an mm -hmm. idea? Or maybe even just a style of music that you haven't yet. Well, actually, um, there's a couple people that I like to collaborate with. Yeah. And, um, well, one of them is Savion Glover. I've never worked with him before. Uh, I want to work with him. I can visualize on, that right now. But, uh, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> those feet, crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's him. Yeah. There's um, Pharrell <laughs> Williams. Oh, I always want to work with That Pharrell. would be amazing. Just because he was one of yeah. the biggest inspirations yeah. in, in my style. Because sure. um, when he came out with the album Seeing Sounds mm -hmm. with NERD, Seeing Sounds, I thought, yeah. like, does he, is he like me? Does he <laughs> see the sounds too? Because I see sounds when I'm actually dancing and in my head. I see like different, I see the sounds and color patterns and it's Amazing. crazy. Yeah, we didn't yeah. really get into that too much, but uh, yeah, oh, that's, to, yeah. I have like the whole Wonka factory up here. I'm like. <laughs> synesthesia, you have synesthesia. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, 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 I heard, yeah, because um, I believe Jimi Hendrix was the same way I heard. I, yeah, they, they said, they had said he, 
he had this, this interview where someone, well, he was like describing his one sound. He was like, no, nah, man, it's more of a purple sound when you, when you strum it like that. It sounds more purple. And that's exactly what kind of goes on in my head sometimes when, um, like, with different sound, with different vibrations and different tempos, I hear y'all see different patterns of colors. Yeah. But, um, wow. Yeah, so it sounds like there are a lot of there are a lot of new collaborations that could yeah. Be well, that possible. and I don't know, maybe Damien Wetzel. Uh -huh. I can collaborate with him because Yet we've been again. doing so much work. Mm -hmm. uh, he will. He's been doing so much work on the outside, and he still has it. Like I don't know if anybody knows, but he's he's never lost. He still it. gets down. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of that guy. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, for yeah. doing this. Yeah. This is such yeah. a great thing. Great, yeah. Sarah good. Lewis, author of The Rise, oh. Creativity, The Gift of Failure, and The Search for Mastery. Yeah. Get it. Yeah. It's everything. Thank little you so much. Thank you, little buck. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Cool. It's been an honor.